Hey guys, this is Austin. This is the brand new Series 2 edition of the Xbox Elite Controller, which has got me thinking, Kevin, what is the best controller that I can buy right now? Well, we got a different couple options to talk about here. So, let's round them up and see. Kevin Kinsey Music, Kevin Kinsey Music, Kevin Kinsey Music. Do, do, do. The benchmark that I compare every single controller to is the current generation Xbox One. Now it's seen some updates over the last few years, like Bluetooth and audio jack. You also have the Design Lab, but this is always what I compare things to. Kev, why am I wrong? I mean, look, the standard Xbox One controller is a great controller. When it comes to just the baseline models that come with systems, this is honestly my personal favorite as well. Same, yeah. But there's a lot of room for improvement still. I mean, there's a lot of things that have kind of become more common and popular amongst pro controllers that aren't necessarily feasible in an affordable regular baseline like Such this one. Such as? Such as Microsoft's own Xbox One Elite 2. Honestly, we could talk all day about the special features and things. I think the main kind of takeaway points, aside from just general build quality, multiple sticks you can use, multiple D-pads, back paddles, uh, which are pretty common across a lot of these ones. The big stuff for this too, though, is the unique customization features that are in the Xbox Accessories app, where you can do okay. things like button remapping, adding uh, shift button options, stick acceleration, lots of crazy in-depth stuff. And of course, this works across the Xbox as well as the PC, and those settings that mm -hmm. you sync will actually work across consoles yes. as well. Yes. Or across, P did I just call PC a console? I mean, ac across systems, across platforms. Identity crisis. So, uh, aside from the Elite 2, the other one we have here is the Prestige. Now, this is the newest one from Scuff that I mentioned earlier, and the main thing with this is that this is a modified Xbox One controller, so it still has the same core base in it, which is really cool, actually, because that means you can use it with the Xbox One, the upcoming Project Scarlet, PC, whatever. If it works with an Xbox controller, it'll work with this. One of the cool things about it is how you can further modify it. If you want to change the sticks or anything, Ooh. you actually just pop off the faceplate. That's cool. And this is how you can swap out uh, the sticks. You can also switch out the D-pad, although I think you can just do that from having this faceplate on as well. So this one has four adjustable paddles. You can take them off if you don't want to use them. The problem though is that this is expensive, right? This is actually around the same price as the Elite controller. So it's it's 20 bucks cheaper if you just buy the base model unmodified. But one of the big things about Scuff is how you want to customize it to make it your own design. So depending on if you want certain colors, special designs, different sticks, different, depending on all the things you modify and do to it, it can end up adding up to being quite more money. So I get that you're really excited about your controllers and everything, but really everyone knows the superior way to play any kind of game is using a mouse and keyboard, which I so helpfully have provided with the Razer turret. You said this was a controller video. It, this is it, this works with an Xbox. I can control my games with it. I think that counts. What is wrong? Can I bring out a racing wheel next then? <laughs> There's a cursor yeah. inside the game. Wow. It's almost as if I'm playing on a PC called the Xbox. Now to be clear, this is because the Xbox actually does support keyboard and mouse. It doesn't have to necessarily be the turret, but the turret is an awesome controller designed specifically for the Xbox in mind. Because essentially you're getting like a proper Razer keyboard that's built into this little platform. Mm -hmm. And then you have the mouse, which is magnetic. So you can actually kind of, you have a little like, mouse yeah. pad. So if I was sitting. Come on, do it, yep. Yeah, squat workout. <laughs> this is the way all true gamers play. <laughs> So the turret is certainly not cheap. At $250, this is probably the most expensive thing here. So the thing with the, the turret is, is that you really shouldn't use this as purely like an Xbox controller. I mean, it, you can use it like that, certainly, but it sort of makes more sense as like if you have like a PC and an Xbox and you want to have everything kind of unified into one setup. Or if you just really love playing just Fortnite all the time and you want a keyboard and mouse setup. And you don't want to use a PC. And you don't want to use a PC. Yeah, that, that, that's really popular. Now over on the PlayStation side of things, we of course have the DualShock 4. A perfectly respectable controller. It's good, fine, but it's not really great. It's not really super impressive, which is why I'm really curious, especially to play with this Raiju. So actually, real quick before focusing on the Raiju, I think something that's interesting about uh, PlayStation is that on Xbox, you saw some similarities with the two controllers we were trying. They're both based on the standard Xbox design. All three of these are very different. Yes. All three pro controllers we're looking at are very different approaches on how to make a pro controller. This doesn't work. Does it not work or did you not log in properly to? <laughs> did you... you would be correct. I didn't log in correctly. There you go. Kevin Kenson, PlayStation expert. <laughs> so the deal with the Raiju is that at least out of the different pro controllers we're looking at today, it's the least physically customizable. There's a little bit you can do. You can swap out that D-pad. It does have some other sticks. 
uh, but the really heavy focus is on just straight up the build quality. It's so sturdy. This to me, out of all of these controllers, is the only one that feels on par with the Xbox Elite controller as far as just like, it's beefy, it feels heavy, it feels like this is something I could throw across the room in a fit of rage after I lose in Fortnite, and it'll be just fine. The table that it hits won't be, but yes, the controller will survive. <laughs> now, you know, I totally get that customization is great, and for some people, especially with like the scuff stuff, you can go really over the top, but for me, I'm one of those guys who wants to walk into Subway and order the sandwich just as it comes. When I go into Blaze Pizza, I'm like, I just want a pizza with pepperoni on it. I get overwhelmed with too much choice. And you know what? This doesn't have too much choice. I just pick up the control, I'm like, look, someone smarter than me designed this. Sweet, I'm on board. Uh, of the controllers we have out here today, I think this is the only, is this the only one that we're talking about? Yeah, this is the only one we're talking about that is actually not available normally in North America. You can get it, you just have to import it, which also means you're probably gonna spend a little more money than the actual MSRP lists. How much is it? Uh, like if I wasn't importing it, like say if I'm in Europe, how much does this controller cost? Well, you know, that was something I planned on checking when we were filming earlier and uh, hold on a moment, please. That's fine, I gotta kill some droids. Now the Scuff Vantage here is really almost the opposite of what the Raiju is. Well, the Raiju is focused on minimal physical customization, but having lots of just high build quality. The Vantage is all about modular design. Kind of like what we saw with the Prestige, you can take the faceplate off. That's cool. But on this one, you can swap the sticks, the D-pad, and even take out the rumble motors if you want. Kind of like we were talking with the Prestige earlier, with Scuff, things are so customizable, there's not really one set price. Yeah. There's a starting price. Uh, if you get a wired version of this, it starts at 170. If you get a wired wireless version, it's 200. I will say that so far, this is still my favorite. Yeah. I will admit, personally, that's my top as well, for the PlayStation at least. And actually, let's go ahead and talk about this last guy then. So you need a screwdriver to work on this guy, I see. Yeah, there's, so there's a faceplate that locks in and keeps all the modules as they pop out. Yeah. So you can do things like, let's say you like offset sticks, you can have this set up. Or if you don't, just take that off, swap them, and now you have symmetrical. But okay. I like offsets, so I'm gonna put it back. I'm afraid to ask. How much does the Astro C40 cost? Well, the C40 is $200 for the base design, and it does not include all the different swappable parts. So if you want to get all the different D-pads and all the different sticks, it's gonna be a little more. We have fewer controllers to talk about for Switch than we do for Xbox and PlayStation. So I came up with a solution. I got one more. Just Okay. I mean, you've done a video on every like Switch controller ever, so. What is this slime thing? That, my friend, you are you are holding the one, the only, Hori slime controller for Switch. I love that. What? what why? <laughs> what? What? what but but th this is not meant for human hands. It is not comfortable, but it is amazing. <laughs> Uh, I should note that I guess kind of like the Raiju Ultimate we were talking about earlier, this is a uh, Japanese exclusive. So if you want one of these, you are gonna have to pay top dollar to import it. How much but... is this really? How much did you pay for it? I want to say I paid 80. Oh, after these $200 stupid controllers, $80 for a joke is, well, actually wait, no, it's still a joke. <laughs> Can we look at some real controllers now? How dare you? Insult me. How dare you? So for the Switch, when it comes to Pro Controllers, I think the one that really comes closest to kind of at least capturing the idea right now is the SN30 Pro Plus from 8 bit Doe. That actually really surprises me because it's obviously a Super Nintendo style controller, but it has the grips as well as you have the sticks. Yeah. And this also works with a pretty wide variety of different devices, right? It's not just a Switch controller. Yeah, so 8 bit Doe controllers are designed to work with uh, the Switch, with PC, uh, Mac, and Android. But you said this is uh, 50 bucks, right? I believe so. That's yeah. not bad, especially considering like, I mean, I've got like a thousand dollars worth of controllers yeah. on the table right now. Yeah, and in terms of what kind of makes it a pro controller versus say using the official pro controller from Nintendo is that this does offer some of those special features that people equate with pro controllers. Like you can do things like uh, actually remapping what all the buttons are. Nice. So if for whatever reason you really want B to actually be the right to the right trigger button, you can set that up if you like. Now, obviously this is not as full featured as the proper pro controller since you don't have NFC for Amiibo and you don't have rumble or do you? No, this does have rumble. That's right. Oh, it does have rumble. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. You do have motion controls though. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yes. So this is the Split Pad Pro from Hori and it's meant to be an alternative to Joy-Cons. Now, because it is a third party option, it doesn't actually have all the features that you might get used to seeing in a Joy-Con. Uh, you don't have rumble. You don't have the ability to use uh, Amiibo scanning. You do have the motion control still. Uh, but the big trade-off for that is that you actually have 
a it larger, yeah, it, it's a larger controller design that's actually designed to fit in your hands. I mean, look at the difference, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not even close. Yeah. Now, it doesn't necessarily fit in a bag as well or anything like that. True. But these, to me, the Joy-Cons are fine for a quick game if you want to do mm -hmm. some, like, some Just Dance or whatever. Yeah. But this is not a super comfortable way, especially when you're using them, even like yeah. a Joy-Con grip. No, it's not that great for long periods yeah. of time. Well, and especially being used in handheld mode, I got to say that it's not just a matter of the size. It's not just that the thing is th simply bigger. It's that it actually does have contoured grips and is designed to fit in your hands a specific way. Yeah. It does have remappable buttons on the back side. Because nice. these are each individual units, you can only remap buttons that are on the same side. Right. But still, that's better than not having any remappables at all. Yeah. And because it's a Hori controller, it has a turbo function. Because turbo is what we need. You can't mm -hmm. non-turbo game. I mean, if you like turbo, I mean, the slime does it. You want to use the slime? It's got a turbo I'm button. Good, I'm good, you, you, you have at it. <laughs> Now, if you actually want to use some of these controllers, you might find the sponsor of today's video useful. This is the brand new Optimus Cinema XP1. This is a 4K ultra short throw projector, which can go all the way up to a full 120 inch picture. Now, the cool part about this is that you don't have to sacrifice your space. Even if you have a smaller room or apartment, you can still get the maximum out of the projector by putting it just a few inches away. The picture quality is incredible too. Not only are you getting an insane amount of brightness for a projector, but it even supports HDR10. You're you're also getting an integrated Dolby Digital 2.0 soundbar with a full 40 watts of power. Now of course if you want you can connect it to a full speaker setup, but honestly just the way it comes it actually works really well as an all-in-one entertainment center. It also supports a variety of streaming services, you have voice control using Google Home as well as Alexa, and you can also take advantage of the InfoWall app to fully customize the experience. If you're looking to up your home theater game, then you should definitely be sure to check out the Optima Cinema XP1 at the link in the description. And again, huge shout out to Optima for sponsoring this video. This excellent bit of consumer advice has been brought to you by Kevin Kenson. You can feel free to subscribe to his channel at youtube.com slash Kevin Kenson. Kev, can you please play us out with a little tune maybe? Uh, a song and dance, uh, perhaps a an ode to the slime? I can set things on fire. That's a great alternative. Well, this doesn't have super reactive environments. I forgot. Come are you, on. Are you complaining about The Witcher on Switch? The greatest port of all time, according to everyone on YouTube? I mean, it does run great, considering. It does look like Vaseline was smeared on my TV, though. <laughs> <laughs>